Good evening and welcome to uh, my Thursday night vlog for the um, event two at Q School. I'm going to go through quite a few matches um, this evening for tomorrow's play. Um, relaying what happened today. Um, disappointing to lose with Raymond Fry. Um, as much as I really did think he was the value in the um, in the match, he lost four nil, but it doesn't tell the whole story really. He lost the first two frames on the black, and then lost the fourth frame on the pink. Um, you need a bit of luck in this game, as as you well know. Um, you know, you can swing the roundabouts. Um, you know, I had my luck with uh, Fraser Patrick winning the um, the first event, which which you know you don't win outrights with a bit of luck without a bit of luck. Sorry and. Um, I mean, I seem to be losing so many black balls. Um, you know, in the first event, I tipped two players to win, and they both lost four three uh, on a really spotty black. So, yeah, it, it can happen, and um, we just have to move on and um, look forward to um, tomorrow. Um, earlier on Twitter, I put up a guy, quite an unknown player from Belgium, uh, called Dan Layson. Um, I put him up at six to one um, in his match tomorrow against um, Sahail Vahedi from uh, Iran, who's um, just recently come off the tour. Um, he's been trimmed into nine to two now. Um, I certainly feel like that is pretty damn good value, even still at nine to two. Um, <clears throat> um, he's, as I say, he's quite an unknown player. He um, in the first event he played. Um, Jackson Page, who qualified, um, Page won four two, but um, again that doesn't tell the whole story either. I mean, four of the frames um, in the match um, were very close. Three of them were won by Page. Um, I think in the third frame, um, it looks like Layson um, possibly um, did a three fouls and uh, misses um, because the score. In the third frame was twenty three five to Page, um, so you know that that that, you know, that one can just sort of take out completely. He did an interview today, um, Jackson Page, with um, Phil Haig from the Metro, <clears throat> and reading through it, um, he said that he didn't know anything about Layson, but he said he potted very well. Um, he could definitely play, and he was just let down in at times by his safety game. <clears throat> so if you can shore that up i think he's got um he's got a real shot here um I, he's fellow countryman he's a guy called julian leclerc who's a lot shorter than him in the betting you know in the outrights he's around about a sort of 16 to 1 shot but he in the world championship beat sahel the haiti 6-5 and on youtube um these two um Layson and leclerc played each other in the um, six red um, sort of amateur championship. And Leclerc won that 4-3 um, on the pink. I watched it this afternoon. I really don't think there's um, a fat lot between these two. Both left-handers, both really good potters. Um, so, I mean, if Leclerc was playing Vahedi in this, I would expect the bookies to go 5-2 to two possibly, 9-4 to four on Leclerc. Um, yet... You know, Layson, you can get, um, well, he can't now, but he was opened at 6-1. to one. He's now 9-2. to two. I think the real price should be sort of between 3-1 to one and 130, maybe 7-2 to two on Layson. So it is good value. And Vahedi, um, he's certainly not, you know, in the reliable clan um, in the slightest. Um, he, he, he can run unbelievably cold. I mean, he can have real hot streaks. You know, he's had a few good you know runs at the end of the season, uh, beating I think he beat Tom Ford, Mark Williams. Um, he he can play like um, a really good pro, but um, when he's hot, when he's cold, he's absolute terrible. And um, yeah, I mean, in the um, in the event um, in the first um, in his first round match, uh, Layson knocked in breaks of seventy six and seventy five. Um, so you say he can play. He's actually based in um, Barcelona in Spain, and I've done a little bit of digging um, on him. Um, 
He's um, he plays in the um, amateur, um, big amateur tournaments in Spain. It's called the um, the Lace Tour, and he's a three time um, Lace champion um, over there. So it's like the you know the top amateur game in Spain. I mean, it doesn't really say much because I mean you know Spain is is hardly a, a hotbed for um, snooker. But um, I say I've watched him play um, Daniel Womersley as well in this um, Six Reds um, World Championship, well, Amateur World Championship. Um, and he lost that 4-3 as well. And I do rate Womersley a lot. And um, the first ball, he actually potted this Laysen. Um, he rammed in a long red. As sweet as a nut. I mean, honestly, if Judd Trump would have done it, you know, you'd have been uh, wowing over it. He, you know, cued it so beautifully. So he looks um, a real, you know, a real decent player to me. And um, he's got absolutely nothing to lose. <coughs> um, yeah, and I thought six to one was um, way too big. And, yeah, it'd be interesting to see, um, you know, how this guy gets on. So that's my main tip, um, I would say, tomorrow, six to one on. Darn Layson. Um, there's some other games. Um, there's, 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 I wouldn't say anything absolutely standout value uh, coming up in in the Malex sort of collection of uh, matches, but certainly sort of ones that if you want to have a bit of play, they're they're, they're worth a go. And there's a guy um, from Denmark called uh, Daniel Candy. He's a nine to two shot. Um, most of the prices I'm putting up are generally with. Um, Ladbrokes, Bet365, Coral, um, unless I say otherwise. Um, yeah, Daniel Candy, um, he's a five times um, Danish amateur champion going way back to like 2005. Um, in the most recent um, tournament um, in um, in Denmark, it was last year, um, he knocked in three centuries in that, um, in that tournament. Um, one of the biggest sort of um, events over that sort of way in the Nordic uh, countries is the um, Nordic Championship, which should obviously brings together all the champions from Finland, Sweden, um, Iceland, uh, Denmark, and he um, he's been a runner up. La he was runner up last year. He won it in uh, two thousand nineteen and was runner up in two thousand eighteen. Um, and then there's some reasonably decent players in in that. Um, in the 2018 uh, Danish um, Amateur Championship, he actually knocked in a 147. So, yeah, this guy is um, quite capable. He's a left-hander. Um, he's playing Brian Ochoisky, the um, French lad, who I actually put up in the first event. Um, and he lost 4-1 to Callum Lloyd, um, which is um, a really bad result. Um, and the pressure is going to be right on his shoulders in this match um you know he's going to be really wanting to to um perform on the main tour again like he did like most a lot of last season as a top up um and he's like a 1 to 8 shot here yeah that's that's way too sh you know way way too short i think candy's worth a little nibble at 9 to 2 you know i don't think there's mass loads of um value in it but i mean he probably should be sort of 7 to 2 4 to 1 um, you know, a player, all right, you know, only at, you know, Danish amateur championship standard, but if he, you know, you can knock in a one four seven, you're not, a, you're not a mug. So, um, yeah, he, he's, um, he's certainly one, I think is a little bit overpriced at nine to two. Um, David Donovan, who I put up in the first event, he's, um, mainly a 13 to eight shot, um, against Ben Mertens, another lad from Belgium. Um, I think that's a little bit overpriced. I think, you know, not by much. I think he maybe should be sort of eleven to eight. Um, he's actually seventeen to ten with Marathon Bet. If you have an account with them, I don't think there's going to be too much between those two. Um, Mertens does seem to be struggling in in Q school. Um, as much as he's a promising player, um, Donovan has loads of experience, and um, yeah, I don't I don't think um, thirteen to eight is a bad price. Um, another game, Luke Simmons. Um, he's a former world um, amateur champion um, he's been around the block for a long long time um, he's been very close to getting on at Q school quite a few times he's playing um, Lu Hong Hao 
and he's um, nine to four mainly. I think with Bet365, Ladbrokes, um, you can actually get 12 to five on Unibet, um, which I think um, is certainly a bit of value. Um, in the first event, um, Simmons lost 4-3 to Bai Langning. Um, he pushed him right to the uh, right to the wire in that game. Now, Lu Hong Hao <clears throat> is probably as talented as anyone in this field. I mean, he's, you know, very, very special talent. You know, he got to the Crucible a few years ago um, before he lost, I think, 10-0 to Sean Murphy. Um, but I feel like he's lacking a lot of backbone. I really do. I think he's very easy to be get at. You know, he, he can get under his skin quite easily. In the first event, he lost to a guy called Hayden Staniland from Sheffield. And I mean, Luke Simmons is, is, a, is a much better player than him. So, um, yeah, he's got his work cut out in that in that match tomorrow. It'd be nice if Simmons would have been around about three to one. He'd have definitely been a you know a main selection, but um, twelve to five, it's not bad. Um, you know, maybe should be sort of two to one ish. So um, he's he's worth a go. Um, another guy from Iran is a guy called Amir Sarkosh. He's um, a former world amateur finalist. Um, He's a seven to four shot against Paul Davison. I don't think that's too bad um, on the face of it. Um, I think you know I've seen um, Sarkosh play before. He, he can play, and I always like to get against Davison when he's like you know odds on. Um, you know he's two to five, unless he's playing you know an absolute muppet. You know I wouldn't want to be touching him at um, strongly odds on. Um, it's a tough game for Davison. Um, Maybe his experience might might hold the key, but um, Sarkosh, um, he definitely can play, and uh, yeah, he's another another one that interested me. Um, there's two more. Um, Tyler Reese is um, a decent amateur from Wales. Um, it looks a little bit of a pick'em against um, Ross Ballman, who had um, a poor defeat against Gary Thompson in the first event. As for after I put him up. Um, I think he should be just about favourite against uh, Tyler Reese. I think Reese should be maybe eleven to ten, six to five, where you can get eleven to eight um, with um, Lad Brooks. Um, Marathon actually make Baldwin just a very very slight favourite. He's actually odds on with um, Marathon bet, but um, yeah, that that'll be a close game. There's there's, there's little in it. Um, Reese has got plenty of experience um, in the amateur game, and the last one. <coughs> Well, I think he's definitely again a, um, a touch of value, um, probably a bit like you know in the, in the same way as Candy. Um, it's a guy called Ryan Thomason. He's um, he's four to one with Unibet, but he's mainly seven to two with the others um, to beat Ed and Sharif. Um, Thomason played pretty well in his first win, um, so has that under his belt. He pushed Alfie Burden really well in the first event as well. Um, I messaged um, Alfie. Uh, about about Thomason and um, he said you know he played very very well and um, you know he um, he pushed him pretty hard um, and he said he, he's he's pretty useful so um, seven to two four to one he's he's quite good on the Australian um, Sharav I've said before I think he's a player that I definitely like to get at um, I don't think he's um, I don't think his confidence is up after dropping off the tour. He's. Um, I don't think he's got massive backbone either, but I could be wrong. But um, I do think there's a bit of value in Thomason um, with the pressure all on um, Ed and Sharif. Right, that's uh, pretty much it. Um, I hope you've. Uh, hope you. Hope, hopefully, we'll have a few winners uh, tomorrow. Fingers crossed, and um, you know, good luck with your selections. And I'll be back tomorrow with more tips. Hopefully, for Saturday. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Take care. Bye.